Gail in the house, baby. Hi, hi. Let me welcome the amazing Gail King Hello, to John. Molner's table. You are an Emmy Award winning broadcaster, the co host of CBS This Morning, mm -hmm. the host of a serious radio show, mm -hmm. and in your free time, editor at large of O Magazine. King in 60 seconds. LA or New York? California, because ultimately I want to be in California. So I'm going to say- Oh, I know California. your kids are there. Yeah. Sunrise or sunset? Oh, sunrise. Favorite spectator sport? Uh, basketball. What's something that people don't really know about you that would surprise them? I hate buttons. The last TV or streaming series you binged? Uh, the, I just did uh, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Filthy Rich. A favorite book? Uh, Robert Munch, Love You Forever. The person you most want to interview? I, I think Kim Jong-un would be very fascinating. A favorite movie? Uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Okay, and the career you would have pursued if you hadn't been a journalist? I think I'd be a really good real estate agent. Why? Because I love looking at houses. I love looking at the the layouts of the houses, and I love matching people with houses. I think I'd be very good at that. And lastly, the superpower you wish you had. I wish I could eat whatever I want and not have to worry about it. I'm gonna mention people, and I would love you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind when I say these people. Roger Stone. Lucky. Attorney General Barr. Baffling. Luke Bryan. Joy. Serena Williams. Powerhouse. Donald Trump. The president. And the last one, Joe Biden. Compassionate. Okay, Gail, we're all warmed up. Let's get to it. Okay. So you just finished a two-week quarantine at yeah. Oprah's guest house in Southern California. Yes, that I'm sounds... in the guest house. This is the kitchen. Yes, That's I pretty did. nice. Tell me, what are the two of you up to in your free time? I know you're both working all the time, but when you have some free time, what well, do you like doing? Well, we do normal stuff that friends like to do. You, listen, her place is gorgeous. It's spectacular. So if you walk around the whole thing, you get a really good workout. Mm -hmm. So for us, it, like yesterday was Sunday. You know what we both did? We both had books that we wanted to read. So we just sat outside and just read books. You know, they're, they're on a popsicle kick here at Oprah's place. So there's all sorts of different flavors of popsicles, strawberry lemonade, pineapple mint, dream sickle. I mean, it just reminds you of your childhood. So we just sat around reading books and eating popsicles. It was, we, we said this yesterday, they go, wasn't that the perfect day? It was such a good day. That's nice. Has, has, has Oprah been off campus in the last no. two or three months? No. Nope. Nope. That hmm. she's been here. Well, you know, she has underlying conditions. You know, it's been no secret that she had uh, pneumonia back in January. Mm -hmm. And she still has some residue that she feels from that. So, you know, when people said, God, Gail, she made you quarantine. Stedman, her life partner, was in quarantine for 14 days. Right. Sadie, the dog, John, had gone to the vet and the vet's mask fell off. And Oprah had Sadie in quarantine for 14 days. Wow. She, she's just not playing with it. And people will say, Oh, can we come by? We'll do social distancing. What you realize is everybody's not as careful as you when right. it comes to social distancing. Right. And so she's had no visitors, no nothing. Gail, tell me what it's like. Uh, you, you called yourself a news junkie before that. We all know that about you. How are you holding up in covering the yeah. news cycle at this time? How Emotionally, how are yeah. you? And how do you stay out? I think out that's an interesting question. John, I think that's an interesting question because as you know, uh, you know the news business, and we are not robots. Everybody has an opinion about something. The trick is we are not paid, certainly at CBS, to hear my opinion. But there's no way that you can take all this in on a steady, a steady drumbeat of pain and sadness and not feel affected by it. I feel deeply affected by it, and sometimes it is. It's very, very difficult. You know, I had a moment where I had a moment on the air after we had had George Floyd and the Central Park uh, lady uh, who went after Chris Burger. Cooper. Yeah, back to back, and it just got to be too much for me. And 
you know, when you have, listen, you've got COVID, you've got health economic problems, and you have racial strife. I call it a trifecta of pain. Any one of those things would be enough to take you down. But I also think we have a job to do. I always like having a front row seat to whatever it is we're doing. So I'm very mindful of that. But you know, you get off the air and sometimes you're just friggin' drained by what you just saw, what you just reported. And, but I think, you know, our job is more important now than ever before. You spent 18 years in Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah. And I know a little bit about that because, you know, I spent four years in Hartford, Connecticut. I was at Trinity College in Hartford. Oh, wow. So you know and the area then. That- this is going to surprise you, but I'm going to uh, let you know today that I was actually an intern at WFSB in Hartford my senior year in college. No way. 1984. So you were an anchor. I was there. You weren't going to talk to me. I was like, I was getting you water, or, you know, cleaning John, up. John, no way. I was there yeah. because yeah. I was there from 1981 to 1999. When are you going to be in the New York studio? Well, you know, we are, we're just getting back in the New York studio. Uh, we came back June 22nd, June 23rd, something like that. And so I'm going to be here in California for the month of July. Mm-hmm. I will reluctantly be coming back to the... Listen, I think the show is better on, in the studio. I miss the camaraderie at the table. I think it's important to have that. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to that. But before I came here, John, I had been in my apartment from March, mid-March, to June, over a hundred days, I left five times, five times. Now, you know, had I known that we, it was gonna take till June, I would have, you know, loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly, as they say in the Beverly Hillbillies uh, theme song, I would have done that earlier. And then I would have come back full force in June. But by the time they decided we're coming back in June, I go, I, I basically, I need a break, I need a break. And so they still want somebody at home because we're still going back in layers. Right. So my man went up first. I'll, st- I'll be the one that does it at home. I'll be the one, I'll be the one. You're doing it at home in California. So are you getting up at 2.30 in the morning? What time are you one getting up? One o'clock, one o'clock. One o'clock. You're getting up at one o'clock. Yeah, that's difficult. That is difficult. But the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. What, what do you expect uh, in the election? I'm looking for a leader who I, who I hope will unite us as, unite us as a country because we are very divided. But you know, the only way you get that is you, the people. I keep saying, we are the people. You know, we don't really have to wait on politicians to tell us what to do, or you don't have to wait on politicians to lead you. You do that by going to the vote, by going to the ballot box on November 3rd. You know, this country will get the president it deserves because we are the ones who are making that choice. I think you've been planning a wedding that's now delayed. So I wanna ask you about, whether that's been fun or stressful. And then I wanted to ask you who I was sitting next to, who you had me in the... <laughs> you would have a good seat, John Molnar. You would have a good seat. But this is the thing. Kirby and Virgil, her fiance, they said they wanted to get married in 2020, but they never gave a date. So oh. I, had to, I had to stop asking because I kept saying, you know, we need to start planning. We need to go shopping. So one day towards the end of the year, she said, mom, I haven't picked a date, we'll decide because I'm concentrating, you'll like this, I'm concentrating on having a big marriage, not a big wedding. Well, that's I come, smart. I come from a divorced home, ouch. I come from a divorced home and I don't want that, I don't want that. So we're doing everything we can to make sure, so they're going through premarital counseling. I said, is there a problem? She goes, no, but we just wanna get it right, which I actually think is a really good idea. And then COVID hit. So even if it had been 2020, uh, they wouldn't have been able to get married in 2020. How about you, Gail? What's what's dating life for Gail King? Gail is single and available. There you go. You know, Gail is single and available. You know, what's dating life? I think that, um, what? because somebody said to me, would you like to be married again? And I used to say, yes. And now, John, I sit here and go, does it have to be marriage? It could just be a really nice companion. Right. I used to think, yes, 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 I want to get married again. But now I'm thinking, listen, I believe life is better when it's shared. And I think everybody, I never believe people when they go, I don't care that I have a partner, I don't want a partner. Just speaking for myself, I believe that life is better when shared. I have great friends, great children, great job. So my life is good. I'm not sitting here having a pity party for myself. But when we went into COVID, I I was saying to friends, 
it's very difficult to be single at this time. And I never really thought of it uh, because my life is so full. I'm going, going, going. But when you're just sitting at home, mm -hmm. you yourself and you, I got sick of my damn self. I'd sometimes walk by the mirror, hi, Gail. Or I'd look out at the birds, hey, birds, I'm here. You know, so I, I realized in moments like that, mm -hmm. that it would be nice to have somebody to share your life with. Is there a piece of advice you received in your career that was important? You know, I don't know if it was career advice, but it was certainly life advice. And that would come from Maya Angelou, who said, people may not remember what you say, they may not remember what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And I've, I've never, ever, ever forgotten that. Because it's so true. 